under the passenger seat. Yeah. You've got your fridge. Right, welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get started, I'd just like to say we've changed our upload schedule, which I mentioned in the last video, but we're now uploading on a Wednesday, Saturday, and occasionally on a Monday. All videos are live from 7 a.m. And uh, we're, today we're filming in um, the new shed, well, part of the new shed. And you'll just have to excuse the echo, but it's windy outside and we thought this is the best place to do it. So let's get started. Today we're going to finally give a review of the Class Arian 660. So we'll just we'll start by walking around the outside and we'll just sort of go through what we like and dislike. But it is, it is just our opinion, so <laughs> don't take it too seriously. But hopefully it'll, if you are interested in them, hopefully it'll give you a bit of an idea of what they're like and maybe help you out if you're looking to buy one or anything like that. So we start from the outside, we're like, it's probably, it's probably not the best looking tractor on the market but it's just definitely improved the look of them and we definitely like the look of this one, like just silly little things like now being out blue it's got a nicer exhaust on it but like that's pretty, <laughs> none of that really matters as long as it does the job well but is, yeah, I, th I think it's personally I really like the look of look of it, but I do. I'm not going to say it's the best looking tractor because I think there's probably slightly better looking tractors, but still a very nice looking tractor in my opinion. So as you can see, we've got front links and front PTO on it. We've got the buttons for controlling the front links here, which is very good. If I my New Holland, we haven't got that on it, which is done off a spool, which makes it a lot harder to hitch up with. But We've got front links and front PTO. We like being able to put a weight on and off when you need it, especially during the spring and then in the summer. Because like Ben, when he's plowing, he has his big toolbox so he can carry all his bits in it. Where now, when he's moving trailers or something, he only needs this 900 kilogram weight on. The PTO is something that we potentially wouldn't have on all of our tractors but having it obviously helps for if you're doing a job like topping and this, yeah, it can be handy, but you don't always need it. Yeah, but it's, it was it. we didn't get it brand new, so it's the next demo, so it's come fairly well spec'd out, which is quite good, like some stuff we maybe wouldn't spec, like with James Sim from PTO, but we have got that, which is, actually, is quite nice, it's nicely spec tractor, and it's quite perfect. But um, yeah, if you're, a good thing about this tractor is the maintenance and greasing it up is it's very few grease nipples to grease up so it literally takes hardly any time to grease up like your front suspension has gone from having like a wishbone um, front suspension which had loads of grease nipples to now you literally there's literally four grease nipples to do the suspension there's like yeah three on the front links but it's nothing it's easy and there's a few on the back also the um the grease nipples are easy to get to you don't really have to be in underneath like getting to them like as you can see here they're out in the open bang 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 another one there like it's not hard to get to it just makes it a lot easier to do it's not the nicest job so if it's made easy then that's obviously a great help you're not having to crawl under the track but yeah, it's, it's a 660, so it's a 185 horsepower boosted to 205, which is like pretty, pretty good, I feel, for a tractor of this size. And uh, you would have seen our latest silage video, and we both recorded how quickly we made it up the hill. So the lowest speed that my new Holland got down to was five and a half miles an hour, and this puppy got down to... 6.3 and also back in the spring we both were hauling fertilizer together and it ended up that this one was pulling up faster than my new holland so i think we can uh so yeah understand you missed, you missed that the hill thing up a little bit did you so it's the so class is better it's it. got more power than what the new holland does which is boosted to 195 you yeah, my new one's going to be chipped to 195. So when we were looking at this, the only real competition we were, or like the only real other brands we were looking at was either this or the John Deere 6155R or a 215. But we just felt 
we we felt this was the better tractor for us because the 155 would just be lacking on the power, only being 155. And then the 215 is like I've seen quite a few people say it's like not really the most nimble of tractor. It's quite the steering lock isn't great, the turning circle, and it'd probably just be a little bit too big for us around here. Like you could get it around, but it just would be you would be awkward, and it wouldn't be quite as maneuverable as this one. Like this one, turning circle on this one's amazing. So we thought we'd have this one has the extra power, which the 155 doesn't, and then has the maneuverability, which the 215 doesn't. So that's why we went for this in the end. And we've been pretty happy with it. And uh, with the spud jobs, obviously we have like quite tight headlands, especially with what I was doing the other day is ripping out headlands. Obviously you'd find yourself in tight corners, trying to not drive on the rows. You need maneuverability and you don't want to be in a big, like a big build tractor, so. And when we test drove this at the local dealer, the mechanic told you to turn around in the tight spot and uh, it proved its maneuverability there, didn't it? Yeah, well it's like, you know, I looked at it and then it was like, I was used to, because I came from a T7 like James is. I looked at it and oh, the T7 wouldn't get, get around there very easily, but this literally went around easy, no problem. So, yeah, very impressed with that maneuverability. But, yeah, we've got, so the tyres, we've got spec on it. We've um, got Michelin 650-42s on the back. Obviously, 540-30s on the front. But then, yeah, this like, the older ones do have a toolbox here, which would be handy, but we've got that blue tank here, so then you have to... <laughs> it took me, took me a couple of minutes to work out how to fold that up to get the <laughs> blue, but... Keep going around to... Got the, we haven't got the full light pack, package, but all the lights have been upgraded to um, LEDs, which is like, it's nice when you switch them all on and it's all the same colour light. <laughs> it's like stupid little things, but it does as you do actually like it a lot. And then, yeah, we've got, so we've got the buttons, you've got one of these you can program in the cab, which I'll show you in a minute. And we say I have, usually I have my hydraulic top link, but sometimes it's handy being able to program it because when we're dropping the seed off at the field or the fer fertilizer, it's like, you sometimes you're not in the nicest, levelest of spots, so it's quite nice to be able to get out and sometimes put it on the hitch so then I can um, push it out and just make sure the trailer isn't gonna roll off anywhere but yeah so um, yeah as <laughs> the back end is it's like nice and solid easy everything's so easy to get to is um all the spools are like you got your two there which you can um easy to access where did the new holland i had james's doesn't have it but i had an older one and if you have all the spools the spool block was all this side and it was a right paint because you'd have to like, when you wanted to plug your pipes in, you'd have to run, like jump over the drawbar to get them in because you'd like, having to lean round was just an absolute fat. But yeah, that's the back, the pretty standard back end. We do have the uh, awesome automatic lock-in stabilizers, which fold um, like release when you drop your, drop your like implement down, and then when you pick it back up, they'll lock automatically lock back in, which is just, it's nice when you come to leave the field, all you have to do is pick, you pick it up and then you're off, you don't have to get out and try and get your pins back in. Yeah, well, and we have, we have the air brakes, which is, which we, um, I've got that adapter, which I, I was talking about in the silage video, we have like, I think it's called si making silage in the rain. So that's, we just have an adapter, which we plug in here, and then we can use, plug an airline in, which is going to be handy. Got an air grinder, so when we're digging, we like if you have a breakdown, it's always it's always a faff having a battery power while they're running out of battery just before you're done with it. So hopefully that will come in useful. And then not a lot around here, just exhaust. And then here you have a step steps, but they open up, and then you have your toolbox. You have a toolbox in here, so it's, it's not a lot. Most tractors don't really have a lot of space for your toolbox, but. I still feel that's like pretty decent. I've got a lot, got a lot of stuff in there, but we are, are planning on a, a little box made here, a toolbox, so I can just fit some extra bits like the air grinder and an airline and just bits and pieces for when we're digging. So we have 
have, have it there easy and I don't have to like, keep a little nice weight on them or have to put the big, big toolbox weight on. But yeah, that's pretty, we have got, it's like become standard now with the like lorry wing, wing mirrors, which is, I like personally, because you can, um, you can see like your trailer coming around the corner when you kind of get in a tight gateway. You can just watch, watch it come around the corner where without the bottom bit you couldn't, it was a bit awkward. Well, the outside just feels really well built, and um, so uh, we're very happy with it. And I'm pretty sure the engine actually in it is a John Deere engine, so that's never really, that's not really a bad thing. So, yeah, the outside, that's about it for the outside. <laughs> Got enough of every melody, they all sound the same. Yeah. For my broken heart, no remedy, but maybe if you stay, we can get away with it. Cause you make me love my imperfections, answer all my questions just to show me what's on the other side of inhibition. has got the, this, they have put, the new ones have got a bigger fuel tank, so it's 370 litres, which is a lot bigger, which is ideal for like long, long days, you don't have, you can go a lot longer without needing fuel, and it is pretty good on fuel, so it ends up, yeah, I am, like, I rarely have to worry about needing to refuel during, whenever I'm doing a big day, but that's just another thing, so we'll go in. So, basic thing to start off with is under the passenger seat. Yeah. You've got your fridge. Well, it's like a cool box. Cool box, it? and other it keeps like two two liter water bottles or something. Yeah, you can get your lunch. Something like that. You. So when that's down, you've obviously got this surface here. You can do whatever with. Yeah. Then uh, this here is a little compartment which pops up and open like that, or. You can even take the whole yeah, section out, out like that, and you can if you and have that bit there. So you can put stuff in there and take it out if you're in the field and got like tools in there. We're this tractor's currently on 650 hours, so we've done about 400 with it so far. We've got the GPS in here, so that which is first time we've had G, GPS and auto steer, so it's like comes with all the auto steer so it'll steer itself and then here's the Seabus screen it is Vario so we can I'll go through all that in a minute but it's yeah it's just it's just I feel like really nicely laid out in this massive the first you do notice it's a cab is absolutely huge you got like loads of room and so you got loads of like foot floor space headroom space behind your seat there's literally loads of room in here so you don't feel like cramped or anything. It's quite nice having a big front window as well when you're going along. And good visibility. Did have they do, they do come with these little sign like warning signs on the back, but I've taken them off because they just you can see out the back really. But yeah, that's what it looks like inside. You got your got some just sort of buttons here. You have to a little bit of a pain is you got to unlock. Um, your hydraulics every time you switch it on but it's, once you get used to it it's really not that much of a faff <laughs> try to keep this sort of brief but it's, there's quite a lot to it this is the screen so you have your like they have like a sort of a road screen and a 
field screen which doesn't do any anything to the settings but it's just it's just like it's like nicer to have that when you're on the road and then when you're on the field you have this which is good because then you have your like rpm your lift height you can that's that's the spool you all can allocate your spool valve for your rear fenders so that's that and that's your front one and then so you can you can change all these like remaining fuel engine load so you can like you just click on it and you can you've got all this you can you can like customize it completely to like how you want so you got all that so that's just how i like it and then you have your you can see i like i do quite like having my like um droop setting on the bottom so then i can have it has an eco mode and a power mode which just changes the droop percentage so i'm on 21 for eco and 14 for power which literally just basically means like the lower percentage it's like the lower the less revs it will let the tractor drop before it like theoretically drops down the gear so that's all that and then you have your spools you can click on your spools do your flow settings set your timers it's just a, it's this new screen which i think is from 2018 onwards is just like so good it's so easy to like navigate without even you don't have to read up on it you can just literally navigate it yourself and like just work your way through it it's so simple so you got all that, you got your transmission settings, you can your engine memos, your droop settings, you can do all that, you so yeah, you got your forward, all this, how how quick it accelerates, how quickly it switches from forwards to backwards. So like if you like had a front loader on or something, you'd probably want it quite quick, so you'd just whack that put that up to like four. But yeah you can <laughs> you can do all that you got hydraulics which you can go through there but so you got it's just loads of stuff which you can flick through you got counters then you have service you can um you can which is just like reset your maintenance so like every 50 hours you have to it's like ideally you want to you should grease it it says in the manual so i just reset it i greased it this morning so that's why i've just reset it there so then it just i can just look on there and know when i need to grease it again instead of having trying to remember what hours i was on but you have all that and then there is f keys which is i think brilliant so basically you have all these you have 10 f keys or 10 buttons which are on on the joystick you do have two here but you can program all of them to do whatever you want so I've got my F1 and my F2 to do my speed ranges which is up here and I've my like there's a little flicky button down the bottom which does my droop mode to go from power to eco so if I'm when I'm hauling if I come to a hill with like I need a bit more power all I have to do is just flick that and I'll go into power mode so there's that I quite like on my F7, 8, 9 and 10 for like ploughing I sort of I like having it with my F7 lift lift a plough up and then I flick F10 and it'll spin the plough for me and then F8 just back down saves me having to go from up here from down here to up here which is just it's literally just like and you have your this orange button is you hold that and if you pull it back it'll go into reverse and push it forward into into forward obviously so it's just literally when you're in the field you're literally hands on there and you're literally just literally just doing that all day you don't you don't have to take your hand off which is just i think brilliant so like you, do, you have your you have your electric spools here which are nice in there but it's just like you program them to your joystick and you just have everything there and it's literally just you know your pto and then you have your lift arms on the wheel back here so that's that and then there's auto steer there and it's just yeah you could literally just click on here and you got all this you can literally put them any spool and flow plus minus droop modes engine memos literally all those things you can assign to buttons so that's i i personally love that that's been brilliant and then it's just yeah it's absolutely fantastic in the field in my opinion
like I said, this is the 660 only comes in a Vario, so it is a Vario transmission, which is our first Vario transmission we've had on the farm. So we've I haven't actually driven any other Varios, but this one, this one like love it in the field is like so smooth when turning around on the headlands. Like when you come to the end of your run, you like pick the what you do is just like take your foot off take cruise control off pick the plow up and it'll stop on any hill but i do find it sort of does when you're on the road with it with a full load it does lack in when you pull back to slow yourself down with the engine braking it doesn't hold you back enough it sort of likes to run off a little bit but it's there is two modes there's two main modes of driving it there's an auto mode and a stick mode so the auto mode is like really good for driving sort of in lanes but and the stick mode is just a lot is a definitely better engine braking it's just like a bit more aggressive and like will hold you back better but it's just a bit awkward when you're in a lane because it's like it like remember it won't if you pull it back and let go it'll keep going at the speed you let it go so like coming to a dead stop to like sort of creep past a car is sort of it'll keep like trying to keep move but it's not it's not a lot you can do about it but it's quite easy there's just an orange button here you just press it to switch it to auto mode which is just on the foot throttle which is easy and it's just like when you take your foot off it will stop which is different to the stick mode but a good th i do like about the stick mode is that you can actually use the foot throttle to accelerate and then i just use the stick to then to like brake or engine brake to decelerate but yeah it's but other than that the Vario but we're very impressed with the Vario it did take a bit of getting used to to be fair coming from uh, from gears but it's like now when you jump in a gear tractor it is it is hard to sort of you have to think about what you're doing it doesn't come like you don't jump in and you naturally know <laughs> you got to think about foot on clutch <laughs> take slowly release clutch and all that but is yeah definitely enjoying the Vario especially in the field but yeah that's then we've got the, the GPS screen in here the S10 screen which has been brilliant it's just so again just like this screen is so like well laid out and easy to use it's just like everything is just like simple it's like path planning if I might if I turn it on here I can sort of go through it quickly so sort of go menu and you have path planning which is just um then you have your a b line your a b contour which is just you do point a then it just like records your steering then you have a contour one and then you have you have another like point a where it just does like a direction but it's like you have your tasks your implements everything's just like it's simple easy everything's just like there it's just I don't know, I've got on really well with it. It is the first GPS, obviously the first GPS unit we've used. But I've like not had any sort of problems with operate like trying to figure out how to use it. It's been pretty much jump on it and you sort of guys you just sort of get on it, you can figure it out. We did have a guy come from class to show us how to use the tractor when we first got it, but he did so I did he did show it which was nice of class. So he came and gave you just a quick going over how to use the whole thing. And it's just, as well as the GPS, which is just nice. It's like, if you have any questions, they answer it and give you a number. They take your number and you take theirs. So if you have any more problems, but we haven't really had any problems with how to use it. So it's just been, yeah, we've loved everything about all of it in here. It's been perfect, so easy to get on with figure it out yourself really without you having to spend hours trying to figure out how to set stuff up so that pretty much concludes it i would say from in here we obviously just the normal things you have your lights the radio and you have your pto stuff here you do have we have the suspension for the rear links which is like which is quite which is nice like if you've got a big heavy plow or a kv on the back you push that in so when you got it lifted up you're going down the road you like it just like is suspension for it so you're not like bouncing it down the road which i i personally like and i think it's a, like a brilliant idea so although this isn't my tractor there's a few things that i like 
First of all, starting around the back here. I do just like the back end and how easy it is to get to stuff like I was saying earlier. And also, another thing that I like is that your arms, when they're down, they're not, what's it called? Auto-locked? Yeah, automatic. So, yeah, lock. so the automatic this... locking, I think that's really good for like, obviously when you're going down the road, you want it locked. If you've got a KV on, which is a fair size ripper, start swaying around. So the fact that it locks and then once you get in the field, you just drop it down and they're free flowing. That's definitely a thing that I like. So yeah, I like the spacing on it. I like those automatic locking arms. So the final thing that I like about this tractor is that it's Vario. Obviously, it's probably the same in every Vario tractor, John Deere, New Holland, whatever you're driving. I'm used to power command in my New Holland, so 19 gears all done on a button, and that can obviously stall. Whereas it being Vario, you don't stall. Drove it a few times in the spring, I think ripping. And um, it's amazing being able to get to the end of the run, let go of the throttle, you stop, you can focus on picking it up, turning around or whatever, and you just don't stall, especially on some of the ground where it's steeper. And yeah, it just makes it generally a lot easier to do and a lot smoother. I don't actually drive this tractor, obviously it's Ben's, but the one thing that I dislike and from the feedback I get from Ben is that Obviously in the New Hollands we've got the exhaust brake which is really good for when you're hauling on the road and now you stop using your brakes as much whereas this thing doesn't have obviously doesn't have the exhaust brake and it's done on your um, joystick for your engine braking or you just have to use your brakes so yeah the one dislike is not having an exhaust brake but that's just because I'm a New Holland driver I reckon you just get used to it if uh, this is what you're driving and I'm sure there's ways of getting around it. Alright, so I'll go through the things I like about and dislike about this tractor. Firstly, I think that greasing up maintenance wise, it's just so easy, so simple, just five minutes done. It's like, it's not a big deal. That's, that's brilliant, I think. The engine, I think, is another one, just and being, having the power in a, like, the smaller size tractor, still being the same size as, yeah, like, your 155Rs and your T7, T7, 210s. It's just got the more, more grunt. It's just nice not having a, buying a tractor and then having to chip it straight away because it's not got enough power. So I love that about it. The big fuel tank, I think it's just um, ideal for longer days. It just makes, makes it just, yeah, you don't have to worry. You can go ages without having to worry about filling up. Also, just the whole cab, just being massive, one being massive, so much room in there. Like if you need to put a bag or a lunch bag or whatever, you've got your fridge, that's another thing. It's just, it's just little things, but they make mean a lot. They make a big, big difference. Just the joystick and the whole armrest, it's just, I think, just, I can't fault it really. I think there's like nothing wrong with it. It's just literally perfect and so some other stuff is like yeah i just love the layout like james said the back end layout is just i think brilliant just easy to use it. for sure yeah and it's also it's little but like pushing these to release the pressure to get your pipes out is just and just having little but like pushing these instead of having to have the ones where you have to yank it out it's just so much better because you end up yanking out and smacking your arms and stuff so that's just easy it's just they just pop out it's no hassle but yeah all the back end i think is like yeah brilliant also like i know like most most pretty much all brands they all do it but like just these programming those buttons for your hydraulic top link and just being able to change them just yeah it's just makes you makes your life hitching up and stuff so easy so you don't have to keep jumping in and out but yeah like i say you get that on pretty much every tractor that is just stuff we have. The barrier as well I think it's just absolutely fantastic when you're in the field just like can't be it it's just so smooth and so helpful but no, <laughs> that's sort of a rough overview of all the things I love about it. Overall I just completely love it but that's just like a few key points. Um, Go on some dislikes sort of just like not dislikes but just sort of little slightly irritating things. <laughs> As much as I love the area of the field when it's on the road, it's probably, it's not quite, like if you compare it to the exhaust brake in the New Holland, it's just, it doesn't hold you back sort of well enough, in my opinion. 
but it's, I did, to be fair, during lockdown I did speak to a guy from class because he rung just to see how I was getting on and I did mention it and he did say they are looking at working for the 660s on a new program to improve the engine braking so hopefully that comes about sooner rather than later it's obviously been delayed at a minute but hopefully that will come about and it will just completely change the tractor and make it so much better if they sort that out it would be absolutely incredible but yeah so that's probably one little niggle which I don't like is the well just a little bit irritating is the engine braking in it then I can't to be honest there isn't a lot else the only other thing is just maybe when you get in the cab if you just listen to listen to this hopefully when you get in and you shut the door you just get a bit of a rattle like this like that noise is just <laughs> it's literally nothing but if i had to like pick a couple things out it's just like that maybe it's just a tad just a tad annoying it doesn't it's like yeah it's just not the nicest sound really is it like it's yeah bit of a rattle but just doesn't really mean anything in terms of how good the tractor is it's just trying to give you guys a couple as much detail as we can without going too overboard with information so that's just one thing dislike but to be honest with you that's literally it yeah just incredible tractor to be honest just like all this programmable absolutely love it just everything gps love it power of the tractor absolutely love it just feels stable uh, another thing which is really good on it is how smooth it is on the road we haven't got an air suspended cab but like it is still like it's got four springs in each on each pillar and it's yeah just ridiculously smooth on the road which is like and it's but it is quick on the road as well which i did mention in like previous video it you get like 57k out of it pretty easily which is like 35 mile an hour so it does can fly along the road but other brands do do that another thing which is just a little bit irritating is this you have like your cab filler up here and it fills this little plastic bit it fills up with dust caught something if it gathers dust up here and it's dusty you um it when you close the door the dust drops out of it and goes all over your window which is a bit of a bit of a pain but it's like it's literally nothing when it comes to a complaint yeah so overall i think Tractor is absolutely incredible. We're completely happy with it, and I think, like, we couldn't have, for us personally, what we're doing, what we needed to do is we couldn't have chosen a better tractor, in our, in my opinion. And it's just, yeah, just been an incredible tractor so far. Obviously, we'll have to, we've only had it for a short amount of time, so we'll have to see how reliable it is. But I've had good, heard good things about their reliability. So hopefully that comes true, but so far it's been, yeah, amazing. Even though I don't drive this tractor, we, everyone here, me and Ben, Dad, we all think it is a good tractor. Even just when you're in it, driving it, looking at it, you can just tell and see that it just is generally a good build quality. Like, yeah, it feels good. like it's all together, if you, if you get what I mean. But yeah, we'd like to see how this goes, see what, and see if we have any problems throughout the year and if not like ben said we think this is probably the ideal size power for the sort of stuff we're doing yeah okay so that's it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed the the review hopefully it'll help you out we're just it's please remember it is just our opinions we're we're not trying to tell you what's what or anything we're just trying to help you if you and like show you if you're interested and hopefully help you out if you interesting as you get in one fully recommend it it's yeah brilliant and hopefully this has just been enjoyable hopefully you found this video useful like I say it's just our opinion but let us know if you want to know anything else about this tractor if you're interested in a review on my new holland then let us know in the comments but yeah that's it please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one